Hey guys, how's it going? It's Sashi Birdie Dance, Mikaela Dance. Uh, long time no see, it's me, uh, Michaela. I'm Michaela, it's, it's my name. And I'm here with my biannual <laughs> video update. I made the decision to not be online while I was kind of figuring out my life and dating because I think it's really, really weird to be like accessible on the internet when you're trying to meet people for the first time in real life. I really just wanted to meet people as I was and not know that they could just go home and like see the latest upload to see what I was thinking or feeling or what I was going through. Um, it's like making these videos back when nobody was watching them, it felt like a safe place to be very public and like open about my feelings. But now I have to be very careful because you really don't know who's watching and you don't know who's watching with intentions that are not good so i don't know if that makes sense but i really just wanted like the privacy to work through a new start and sort of find my own identity outside of oh that's michaela she makes videos on the internet and like <laughs> stuff like that so yeah that's what i've been doing and whew, my god dating is a trip i hate it would not recommend it don't date dating sucks don't go on Tinder. Tinder sucks. Bumble sucks. It's awful. It's awful. <laughs> I've been there and I have horror stories. Uh, one of them which I want to share with you today just because I think it's really interesting as a non-Japanese person who has lived in Japan for a long time. And I think you guys might find this story interesting as well. There was this guy and he started working at a restaurant that I went to a lot with my friends and he was half. He was half Japanese, half American. And I thought, oh man, this guy's really cute and he's bilingual and this is me projecting. I assumed that we would have a lot in common as two people who don't physically look Japanese but who can speak both languages. And so I was really interested in getting to know this guy better. He had just moved to the city and he had never really done any exploring in Fukuoka city. So I offered to drive him to Itoshima because I wanted to be a helpful tour guide. And I was feeling really good about this plan. I was like, oh, awesome. This is something that I know really well. I know Fukuoka, I know tourism really well. And I love food, I like driving, like I can do this. I'm gonna pull off like the best date ever. And I was so excited. The morning of, it was beautiful, it was sunny. It was gonna be a perfect day driving around the beach. I go to pick him up and we are driving out to Itoshima. Uh, we got to the restaurant and everything just like tumbled from there. What happened was uh, he is a half American, half Japanese person who came from Tokyo where culturally, I am assuming there are a lot more mixed ethnicity people. And he was down in Kyushu out of the city and me living here, I do know what to expect. I walked into this restaurant and they greeted us kind of with a fear-stricken face because they don't speak English and they fumbled around a bit and then handed us an English menu and basically just gestured for uh, a seat and told us to like go sit down and this is something that I'm used to now it's been years I'm so used to it I know that that's how it is I know it's not their fault I know that showing up in the countryside somewhere until I say something in Japanese they're going to be afraid that I'm not going to understand anything and that's just how it is especially when you look like me. So for me this kind of experience happens wherever I go and I'm used to it and I know now that if I kind of wander off the beaten path and I pop into a restaurant they're going to look at me because they're not sure what language to speak to me in until I say something in Japanese and that happens and that's fine um, but I think when you're half when you're a half and when you're mixed ethnicity in Japan, um, it can go either way. So if you hang out with a lot of Japanese people, you will be assumed Japanese. But if you are seen with someone white as the fucking moon, <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're going to assume that you don't speak Japanese. That like ruined our whole day. <laughs> Basically, he was upset at how he was treated at the restaurant. He didn't like that we were handed an English menu in spite of the fact that we both speak Japanese. He didn't like that the chairs were too short because he has long legs. He didn't like that the staff were staring at us. And 
it kind of made me feel bad because I know that for him, if he were surrounded with Japanese people or if he was on a date with a Japanese woman, he wouldn't have been treated the way that he was treated being seen with me. I know that me being next to him was kind of the thing that switched their brains to, oh no, two foreigners, what do we do? And I, I felt like really insecure in that moment and I felt really bad because I was so excited to like take this guy out and show him a good time. But basically from that restaurant and that initial greeting and the way that we were like kind of just thrown into the restaurant and treated kind of like something that they were afraid of. Uh, <laughs> it really put him in a bad mood. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, oh no. And so I, I said, okay, well, I'm sorry. Like, let's just eat and get out of here real quick. I took him to this pudding place, uh, which I really like. I've been a few times, I really like it. Um, but we got there and we got pudding, we walked around. Uh, he was like, I don't know, this place is weird. I don't like it. Anyway, he didn't like the pudding place, and so I said, all right, well, let's find somewhere else to go. If you don't like it, we can hop in the car and go somewhere else. And he goes like, can you stop trying to drag me place to place? Just because I don't like somewhere doesn't mean we have to leave. I was like, really? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying to show you a good time. I'm just trying to be a good host and like get through this day unscathed. And he was like, you care too much about what people think, which is probably true. Like a lot of it was probably true. Like, I think I was trying really hard to just, like, be good and have fun and, like, have a good day. Maybe I'm too sensitive, but at that point, like, I actually started crying and I was like, I just want to go home, holy shit. And after that date, I did a lot of thinking. I deleted Tinder, I deleted Bumble. I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not even gonna get out there. And <clears throat> started reading this book. I'm really glad I read the book and it helped like identify a lot of things that I need to work on that I still feel like I need to work on. Um, but it also opened me up to like new possibilities because I never realized that having a relationship isn't supposed to be emotionally like draining all the time. Like I thought like getting over that emotional drainage was like what love was. <laughs> it was like pushing through all the sad and pushing through all the frustration. But uh, a healthy relationship apparently is not supposed to feel that way so if you are like me maybe you need to hear that yeah it was really a good time to reflect on my behaviors and how my behaviors kind of influenced the outcome of my bad decisions <laughs> so i've been trying to make better decisions i've been trying to be healthy and yeah uh recently i have been dating someone who is actually very secure very secure, very calm, never gets angry, never raises their voice, uh, very gentle and loving and sweet, and he's a very good person. So I'm hoping it goes well. I'm not gonna talk too much about it right now, but we have fun and everything's really nice. And I hope that it's nice for a very long time. <laughs> Hi, Lon. Anyway, so that's where we are now. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hello, hello. Look who came to visit. Now, um, it's hard to know what the future is gonna look like. I know that I'm here this year. My visa is until 2021 and um, both pets. <laughs> Keep that coming. So as for this year, I know that I'm definitely staying in Japan. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do past 2021. That's when my visa expires and I could apply for PR or I could apply to just extend my visa another three years. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do right now just because I feel like things change so quickly lately and it hasn't actually reached a point where I feel comfortable like oh okay maybe things are gonna stay like this for a while like everything is always changing so who knows how I'm gonna feel in a year and a half but um, for the time being I'm definitely here this year and I'm looking forward to doing all the things that I want to do <laughs> while I'm here um, I hope that this is the year that my parents finally come to visit. I hope that this is the year that I finally go to Hokkaido for the first time. Uh, I hope that this is the year that I get to do all the things that I want to do. And I'm going to work really hard to make it happen.
for the next month at least I know I have a few travel videos lined up and I will try to keep you posted on little life update things uh, as well in between. If there's anything that you want to know, let me know in the comments. If you have any like terrible dating stories, uh, you can leave those in the comments too. It might be extremely cathartic for those of us who have also been through some tough times. <laughs> Oh. Alright guys, thanks for listening. Talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye bar. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I love you. Okay. Mm -hmm.